Okay. All right. So on Wednesday, our topic was slow. And what we talked about was how to find the slope. We talked about rise over run. We talked about right triangles and that relationship rise over run. We talked about that the slope is equivalent to in functions when we calculated the average rate of change. Okay. Now, 3.1 is all about looking at the picture, deciphering what information is given, and then more than likely, you're going to have to find a slope somewhere. So you've got to look for a given rise and a given run. And so sometimes it's like a puzzle that you're going to be doing. All right. So we're going to do a few more examples. But I would, I would just say that most likely the biggest challenge on this homework is going to be finding the missing piece to the puzzle. Okay. All right. So. We were working on example five, and we have not answered any of the questions yet. So what we looked at is the information given in relationship to the picture. And then I said, let's go ahead and find a slope. We found this triangle here, which allowed us to do rise over run and gave us the slope. So we know that the slope of this side of the roof is the same as the slope of this side of the roof, okay? So that's where we left off. All right, so let's look at part A and what that gives us in the picture and then what we're looking for. Vertical struts, vertical up and down, are located three horizontal feet inside each wall. All right, so here is the wall, three feet. So this right here is giving us Nope. Yeah, horizontal feet. All right. So from here to here, horizontally is three feet. Okay. So what we're looking at is this triangle right here, which I am going to draw that triangle down here. And just so you know, I'm color coordinated. So this triangle is representative of that triangle. Okay. And they just told us that the horizontal um, is three horizontal feet. So I know that this is three feet. Okay. What in relationship to this right triangle, what have they given me? Slope, rise, or run? Run. Horizontal run. So we know we have the run is equal to three feet. Okay, now it says, how long are these vertical struts? So it's asking me to find that vertical strut. Okay, so this triangle that I have, I have the run. Do I have anything else about this triangle that I know? The slope, we found the slope of the roof line. So we know the slope is 0 0.5 over one. So as long as I have two or two of the three bits of information, I can always find the unknown. So we're going to put our slope and that is always equal to rise. Well, the rise, this right here is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to call that N over my run they gave me, which is three. So then from here, we can do cross products. 0.5 times three, half of three, wouldn't that be 1.5? So we get 1.5 equals one times N is just N. And we always have to label it. So that would be 1.5 what? feet. And we just found a vertical rise. So it was asking for this. We just found that. I think I can squeeze it in here. This is 1.5 feet. Okay. 
All right. Part B. The rafter extends 1.5 horizontal feet outside the wall. Okay, so here's the wall, here's the rafter, so it extends one and a half feet. If the top of the wall is eight feet above the floor, okay, so this is what they're telling us right here is this eight feet is this wall right here. How high above the floor is the outside tip of the rafter. So it wants to know from the floor to the tip of the rafter. So I'm gonna have to, I have the slope, we know that. And so I need to find a triangle here that would allow me, let me back up. If I know from here to here is eight, and from here to here is what we're looking for. Would you agree with me that if I extended this over, if I knew this right here, I could just subtract it from eight and it would give me that number I'm looking for? Do you guys see that? Okay, so notice when I connected this here, I have a right triangle right here. Okay, so I'm going to come down here and make a right triangle. And so in my picture, this, whoops, this is the one that I have highlighted pink. Okay, so obviously that's teeny tiny, so I made a bigger one. All right, so what do you know about this small triangle? Okay. Here to here is one and a half feet. So 1.5 feet, and it was said that this is the run. All right, do I have anything else? I know the slope, because the slope of the roof line remains the same. So with these two, what is that going to allow me to find? The rise. All right, so let's find the rise. So my slope, 0.5 over 1, equals rise is what we're looking for. I'm going to call it N. Run, we saw that we had, of 1.5. Half of 1.5. 0. 0.75. So I get 0. 0.75, and we're talking about feet, equals 1 times N, which is N. So this is my vertical rise. Oops, 0 0.75 feet. Okay, y'all, that's too small. I can't write it there. So we know this is one and a half feet. Here to here is 1.5 feet. Is that gonna help me find this pink highlighted vertical line? How would I do that? Eight. We know from here to here is eight feet. So I'm going to subtract that vertical rise that we found, and that will leave me then with the uh, height that they're asking for. So we're going to take eight feet minus 0 0.75 feet, and that's going to give us 7.25 feet. And this is what it was asking for, which is this equals 7.25 feet. So that question mark is there. Okay. All right. Next one is a little bit more difficult. Plus, something occurs on this next one that um, I want to stress to you. When you're doing these problems in wet assign, you're going to be given pictures such as this. Trust the numbers because sometimes the numbers and the visual of the picture don't seem to match up. 
and I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a little bit. All right, again, wow, I've got a picture, got a building, I've got a wall. Let me see what additional information they give me. 20 horizontal feet north of HB equals a 50 foot building. Okay, so here's this 20 feet that they were talking about. From here to here is 20 feet, okay? HB is right here and they told me that that is 50 feet. Okay, so I'm going, all right, well, this could possibly be a horizontal run. This could possibly be a vertical rise. And then it gives me that HW equals a 25 foot wall. All right, so from here to here is 25 feet. which means that from here to here is also 25 feet, unless your builders don't make good walls, okay? All right, so I'm like, okay, well, that could be a horizontal, uh, not horizontal, a vertical rise. Um, <laughs> A man that is six feet tall, so here's our dude, and he's six feet tall, wishes to view the top of the building from the north side of the wall. How far north of the wall must he stand in order to see the top of the building? All right, so they are asking us to find this right here. All right, did they give me the slope? No. So the first thing that I'm gonna have to do is locate a right triangle that's gonna allow me to have the rise and the run for which I can get my slope. Well, my, I mean, I would assume your eye first goes here, right? But that's not gonna be helpful because this doesn't go all the way down because he's standing there. And I, yeah, I have the vertical rise, but I don't have the run. So that's not gonna help me find the slope. All right, so think about what's given. Okay, the space between, because this is gonna be a what? This will be a run, right? Okay, but I've gotta try to, create a triangle. So if you'll notice the slope of this goes all the way to the building. So if I, and it's hard to see, if I came down like this and went over like this, that run would be 20, correct? Everybody okay in that? All right, so we found a run of 20 feet. Okay, so I have my run. Can I find my rise? Because in order to find a slope, I need that rise. Now here's my hint. This is where the numbers in the picture do not look like they go together. So what Savannah sees, and she is correct, this building from here to here is 50. This wall is 25. So we're going to take the 50-foot building and subtract the rise of the wall, which is 25. So we're left with 25 feet. So the... triangle that we have created is from here to here is 20 feet, from here to here is 25 feet. 
So the numbers are correct. Does that look like it in the picture? No, because this, I mean, halfway of the building, it would look more correct if it was here. So trust the numbers, okay? So this is gonna allow us to find the slope, which is rise over run. And I want my slope to be a unit rate. So I want one in the denominator. So you have 25 divided by 20, which would be what? Five fours, which is 1.25. So we get 1.25 feet over feet. Okay. Everybody okay on that? So if from here to here, your slope is 1.25 feet over one foot, what is your slope from here to here? The same. So the slope of this remains 1.25 over one. Okay, so now we're looking for this right here, okay? So let's look here. I can't use this as my run because it doesn't go, this line doesn't go to the ground. So can I make a triangle somewhere else with this being my slope? Um, if I did, how do I know what half is? I can't, I could do half of this, but then that's not going to help me with this full length. Okay, very good. What if we went to the guy's head? and created this triangle right here, okay? So let me draw, I'm gonna pull that triangle out and just know that this corner is at the top of the guy's head. That's about as good as I can do or not. That's his head, okay? Now, we know the slope with this, right? Would you agree with me? We already know the slope is 1.25 over one. Do I have, or is there anything else that I can find either the rise or the run? Okay, the rise, is my rise 25 feet? No, what is it? All right, so the wall is 25. We're gonna take away the gentleman's height of six. So we know this is 19 feet. So now we know the rise is 19 feet. That will allow me to find the run and the run from here to his head is gonna be the same as the run from here to his feet. So we're gonna do our slope, 1.25 over one. Rise was given of 19. Run is what we're looking for. Cross multiply, and I get 1.25n equals 19. 1.25 by 1.25 in the direction, say, round to two decimal places or one. Nope, to two. What's it come out to? 15, is it? So it just comes out one decimal place? Yeah, okay, so we get n equals 15.2 feet. And this is this green highlighted. Do this so you know it matches up with the green highlight. And that's what it asks us to find. Okay. All right.
Example seven, no picture this time. Use the fact that for points, so I have an ordered pair x1, y1, and an ordered pair x2, y2 in a coordinate plane, we can calculate the slope, and we know the slope is the same thing as the average rate of change of the line through these points using the following formula. Okay, I wanna show you how this formula matches up to the table. We've been using a table. All right, in the table, what's always on top? Variable. variable. So we get variable, function, okay, in an ordered pair, what one of variable or function is always first? Variable. So this would be like x1, y1, and your second ordered pair would be x2, y2. Now think back to average rate of change, okay? We know that the numerator is, and this triangle means the change in y, and how many times did I write the change in y? And that's when we did y2 minus y1. Denominator is your change in x, and that would be x2 minus x1. So if you don't have the table and you just have ordered pairs and they ask you to find the slope, then you can use this formula. So we have this ordered pair. So I'm going to define this as x1, y1. And this is x2, y2. Now, if it makes more sense to you to put those in a table, if that's helpful to you, you can definitely do that, but it's not required. So to find the slope, which we know is the same thing as the average rate of change, we do the difference in the y's. So that would be negative 1.1 minus 2.5 over the difference in the x's, which would be 2.7 minus negative 4.4. Now, when you're doing this, be careful because if you need to hit the subtraction button and you hit the negative button or vice versa, you're going to get an error. So a minus sign in front of a number, that's your negative symbol. So it's going to be, whoops, I got to get into a fraction first, sorry. So negative 1.1, and then this is the operation subtraction. So we get minus 2.5. And then in the denominator, 2.7 minus, and then the negative button, 4.4. So if we go to two decimal places, negative 0.51. So this is your slope. Now, since we don't have like feet, like negative 0.51 feet over one foot, if you just gave me this on one that just is asking for the calculations, or if this is in web assign, it would, you wouldn't have to put it over the denominator of one, but I just want to remain consistent, so. But if you did, I don't think why this final count it wrong, but if they do, let me know and I'll give you credit for it. <laughs> okay, you are at the center of a circus tent, so this is looking similar to the other one we, we did, where the height is 26 feet, So that is this right here. You are facing due west, which you take to be the positive direction. The slope is given negative 0 0.7 feet over one foot. If you walk five feet west, so from here to here, it's telling you that you're walking five feet. How high is the tent? So what it's wanting to know is this height. 
Okay, well, they give me the slope, so I'm not gonna have to go find a triangle to get the slope, but I do have to find a triangle to see if I can figure out this height. And it, it's always gonna be in relationship to something that you're given. All right, so are you saying right here? Yeah. All right, look right here. She pegged it pretty quick. Good job. So this triangle right here, so I'm going to draw it down here. Okay, so now on this triangle, we know we have the slope, correct? Because they gave us that. What else do they do I have in this little triangle? Mm -hmm. I have the run because a bit from here to here is five feet, then I know from here to here is also five feet. So I have the run, which is five feet. So that's going to allow me to find this small vertical rise. That's what we're going to look for, okay? So my slope, negative 0 0.7 over 1 equals rise is what I'm looking for over run, which is 5. Okay, now, when you have a situation like this, we encountered this on Wednesday. What did I tell you to be sure and always do? Use the positive. So we're not going to use the negative. All right, so we're going to cross multiply and 0.7 times 5 is going to be 3.5 equals 1 times n is just n. So I get 3.5 feet. So now we know that this run is 3.5 feet. So this is the small triangle rise. So have we answered the question? No, we need to know the height of that vertical green highlighted area. What can we do now? Mm -hmm. So from here to here is 26 feet. So we're going to take that 26 feet and then we're going to take away this small portion right here. So we get what, 22.5 feet? And that's what it was asking. Well, Savannah, you found it a lot quicker than my 930 class did. I think I had to give them some hints. And that, I, I mean, that'll, that's why on this assignment, don't wait till the last minute on 3.1, because. If, if you don't have that where you see it pretty quick, then um, it takes some time to start locating those, okay? So 3-1 is done. That is due on Monday. We're going to get started on 3.2 and get a little bit into this. Okay. <clears throat> Linear functions have a constant rate of change. Okay. We have dealt with graphs that look like this. And if I asked you about the rate of this function, what would you tell me that function is doing? Increasing at a, Increasing at a decreasing rate, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a function that is a straight line. That's what a linear equation or a linear function does that gives us a straight line. All right, what does it tell us? It tells us that it has a constant rate of change. Okay, think back to the test we just took. You guys were asked to calculate the average rate of change. So you went to the table, you located two numbers, you did the subtraction and calculated the 
rate of change and then you did it like the last two of the table and they were not the same so you could tell that the rate was decreasing okay all right well now that we have a linear uh function if i were to create a table of all those ordered pairs and i took the first two and found their average rate of change and then i took the last two and found their average rate of change what would happen with my answers? They'd be the same because it has a constant rate of change. So if I calculated the average rate of change to be 2.5, came back here to these two and it was 2.5 as well, since it's constant, I know I have a straight line, okay? All right, all linear functions can be described using their rate of change, which we know is the slope, and their initial value. All right, we've dealt with the initial value. Wasn't that typically where it starts? And when you saw that a problem was asking you for the initial value, what did that get? What did you know? It's when your variable is zero. So the initial value is when your variable is equal to zero. Zero time has passed, zero minutes, zero years since 2000, whatever it is. So anytime you're talking about the initial value, you automatically know your variable is equal to zero, okay? All right, so on Wednesday, one of the things that we talked about briefly and I wrote it down, was a linear equation that was the slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, right? And don't we know this is our function and this is our variable? Okay. Now, in this equation, what have we just been talking about? The slope, and the slope is also in function words, is called the what? Average <laughs> rate of change. Okay, so y equals mx plus b. m, we know, is the same thing as the average rate of change. All right. In relationship to our graph and this course, in our calculator, y is also known as the function. x in my calculator is always known as the variable. And B is known as the y-intercept, but that is also known as our initial value. Now, in relationship to the equation, this number, which is just a letter right now, it makes sense that it is my y-intercept because you told me the initial value is when x is equal to zero. Well, anything times zero is what? Zero. So if I put zero in for the variable, this number is what I'm left with. So the function equals b, that is this number right here. How high it goes up. Okay. All right. When you're working these problems, to help you write your ordered pairs correctly, look for the following statement. A is a function. A is a function of B. Okay, so if we wrote that and I said, I want you to define the function, what letter would you tell me that it is? A. So that leaves the variable is B, okay? Now I wanna think about this in relationship to an ordered pair. What is always first in the ordered pair? That is your variable, which in this case is B. This would be A, which is your function. So be careful is what I'm gonna tell you on this. 
Because when we see A, B, we think, oh, A, B, because alphabetically. Well, no, it's always variable function. So be careful on that, okay? All right, so looking at this example one, it says suppose F is a linear function. So right there, I know that it has a constant rate of change such that F at three is equal to three and F f at 6 is equal to 18. All right, so if you needed to look at this in a table, now, I'm going to ask you a question. Even if you got it wrong, I'm not going to know you got it wrong because they're the same number, so I'm going to ask it this way. Which is my variable, the first three or the second three? The second three. The first three. Whatever is in parentheses is always your variable. So this three is your variable. This three is your function. All right. What about here? What's my variable? Six. Six. So this would be looking at it in a table. I could also write this as an ordered pair. Variable three, function three. Variable six, function 18. All right, so part A says, what is the slope of this function? Okay, well, if you've created a table, you can pull it from here. It's the change in the function over the change in the variable. Or if you wrote the ordered pair, you can use that formula that we looked at earlier in class, where the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we get 15 over 3, which would be 5 over 1. Now, if you gave me just five, since we don't have labeling on what these are, that is fine. Because actually in the next part where it says find the equation for, okay, so now we're gonna find an equation. So now this is where we're gonna apply this stuff that we talked about up here. All right, so I'm gonna write y equals mx plus b. So what do I have in this equation that we just found? Slope. Slope. So in place of this M, I'm going to put 5 over 1. But since that's a whole number, I'm just going to put 5. Y equals 5X plus B. Now, B, the initial value, is what I'm looking for. So think in terms of x variable y function, is there anything I can pull that they gave me that will help me then calculate b? Here's my hint. Didn't they give me an X and a Y, an ordered pair? This is an ordered pair. They actually gave me two ordered pairs. I'm just going to choose one of them. So in place of X, I'm going to put this three. And in place of Y, I'm going to put this three. So now I have 3 equals 15 plus B. How do I solve that equation for B? Subtract 15. Sorry, I'm running out of room. And so I get what? Negative 12 equals B? Is that what you get? Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. When I, when I find the equation, so your final answer when you're asked for an equation, your y or your function will still be a y. Don't put the 3 back in there. 
we are going to put the numerical value for the slope. But then for the variable x, I'm going to go back to the variable x. And now I do want to do the numerical of the y-intercept. So you can put plus negative 12, or you can put minus 12. So this is the equation it asks for. Now, some might be going, OK, but what would happen if I would have chosen this ordered pair? Well, let's look. So if we chose 618 in place of the y, I would put 18. My slope is 5. In place of the x, I would put 6 plus b. So I get 18 equals 30 plus b. Subtract 30 from both sides. Huh, what do we get? So it does not matter which ordered pair you choose, you will get the same B. And what is this B called? It's the y-intercept or the initial value. Okay, so I want you to think about something. What would the ordered pair of my initial value look like? Good job. We said that at the initial value, the variable is always zero. So it would be zero, negative 12. So like if we had a graph, here's zero, zero. So negative 5, 10, 15, negative 15. So negative 12 would be here. And then what in the slope positive? It was positive five. So I know it goes up from there. Okay. All right, that's where we are going to stop for the day.